Hello, my name is Alfred Sawatsky, and I have been bitten by the graph database bug, in particular the Neo4j bug. So I've been building a knowledge graph for my organization's internal use for some time, but I've been struggling about how to keep uh, some kind of documentation in sync with the actual schema. Um, this was easier at the beginning where I could um, sketch you know, the schema, uh, document it, but now as my schema is growing, or my, as my model is growing, it gets more di difficult to keep the documentation in sync. So in this video, I will first show you how I solved the problem, and then after I show you that really quickly, I'll step through uh, the details. All right, let's get started. So uh, this is the uh, Neo4j browser that I use, and it's it's really helpful for all sorts of queries. But really what I want is I want to be able to see for each one of my entities, uh, well, each one of my nodes, I want to have the title, and then I want to have a list of all the properties that could possibly be on that node. Uh, and using this uh, browser, that I could not find a way to do that. But there are other visualization tools out there. One that I've uh, found and I like a lot is this um, Y Files Neo4j Explorer. So it's it's a web-based app, but you can uh, connect to a local or a remote Neo4j database. So here I'm connecting to my database, and you can see it pulls up the schema right away. But again, even here. I can click on there and I can show the properties, but I actually want the properties to show up uh, visually on the graph. So what I did, we'll get into the details later. As you can see here, here now these are square, but I've done, if I cl click on these, I've got properties, um, but I want to show those, and I can do those by going here and, and making some new templates. But I have already uh, saved the templates, so I'll just show one here. All right, so you can see here, for all my node, for all my labels, these are node labels, um, I have a list of um, the properties that are part of that. Now, interestingly enough, it's, I wanted something else in there, so this will be a good exercise not to do that. Instead of comma separated uh, property names, I want to do new line. All right, so here we have an image, or sorry, here we have the graph, it shows the labels and it shows all the uh, properties that are part of it. And now I can go and export this um, like as a PNG, a PDF, and I can uh, put this in my documentation folder somewhere, and other non-technical people can see this uh, for reference. Now I'll go into the details a bit about uh, how I generated this. So if you're using Neo4j browser, and you want to get the schema, typically a lot of the box you'd say call DB schema. Um, it's somewhat helpful, but uh, what, what I've noticed is that there's a few too many relationships, and, I, and I'm not sure why I know it explains it more in the documentation why that extra stuff is there. Um, to, to get a more accurate representation of the relationships between the nodes, there is an APOC um, uh, procedure called Metagraph, which gives what looks like it's the same thing, but it's actually been cleaned up a little bit. So I ended up using APOC Metagraph. But if I click on here, all the only attributes it includes for each one of these nodes, so that each node represents a label, um, is the name, which is the label name, and then a count, I guess, how many times that occurs in the database or in the graph, 
what I want is I want a list of all the properties that are used on that label. So there is another APOC uh, procedure called metadata. If I run that, you'll see that it's um, so it's a table. There's no graphical information there. So for example, I've got, so really what I want, go to server. So I have the server label. Here's the server label. So there's all the, um, there's the label. And then here are all the properties on the server label. Really, I would like a picture that would have uh, some kind of shape and it would have the word server and then it would list all the properties that are uh, associated to that to that label, maybe with their name and also uh, data type. Um, so you can do that, and I'll show you how to link those two together. Um, this metadata also has relationship type, and because I'm only interested in showing uh, the properties that are on nodes, I I filter it based on uh, relationship type. There we go. So we have a smaller set, just uh, node properties. All right, so that's helpful, but somehow we have to get that information and attach them to these nodes. In this case, these are virtual nodes. So we don't want to actually store it. We, we don't want to persist it in the, in the database, but just um, virtually. So one other thing here, actually let's look at the code that I have here. All right, so you can see here is where I pulled out the metadata, so all the property information. And here is where I uh, put together some, I did some string concatenating. Actually, let's just get rid of that. And then what I've done is I've made a, um, a JSON object, or a map, as it's called in Neo4j of a label. So every label has uh, is a key, and then the value is a list of properties. So, so these are all the labels. Okay, so that's really helpful. All right, so now we have all that, and now what we want to do We have a graph you can see here, we pulled out all the uh, the nodes. So we basically said Metagraph, we're interested in the nodes, we're unwinding each one from that collection. And each one in that connection, we're creating a label and a property map and relationships. So we are definitely getting closer. look at the table. So we have a node. Uh, for each node, we know its label. For each la node, we know its prop. Well, we haven't done a proper grouping. So we have is a properties map of all the nodes, and then we have a relationship. So that's neither here nor there. All right, getting closer. All right, so now we need to get um, information about each property, we need to stick it into a new property on the node N. And um, there was this APOC uh, procedure that uh, Michael Hunger told me about yesterday called set property. So if you give it a node, you can add a new key for a property. So this could be anything, it could be props, or but I called it properties. And then you stick something into there. And what I stuck into there was a comma 
delimited list of um, comma delimited list as a string. And then we yield a node, and then uh, here on the final line, we take we take all the comma nodes and we stick them into an, a single nodes list. And then, of course, we have a single relationship list. So if we run it, here we go. We have nodes and relationships. Um, we look at a node, it always has the name property, the count property, and then a properties property. You can see here it was comma separated. So we can actually do, we can be a bit more clever on the formatting, and put a new line in there. You can see there, there's the new lines. So if we were to look at this in the graph, we click on here, let's look at this. You can see there's the properties right there. So again, not that easy to look at, but that's what um, I'm going to go to the Y files for uh, web page next. Okay, so now we have a cipher query that works. Let's close that. Let's restart. run it and you can see here it pulls in uh, nodes so these are virtual nodes and virtual relationships you can tell they're virtual because they have negative ID numbers but you can see here it's pulling in that extra information about property so we say import all um, so I'll look at that um, there's a bunch of non-connected nodes um, I mean labels there and I don't I know I don't need those for this particular schema so I'm just gonna delete those. But if we were to zoom in, uh, you could see here that all I'm seeing is the, the label. So that's um, not that good. But you can click up here, go to templates, you say make a new template. And let's say uh, we're going to do Jira project. We're going to assign that label to there. So let's go to the template. And then you can do some uh, data binding. So let's do one up here. And then this one was up here. We want to have um, the label name. And I believe that was called. So the Y, y work for the Y files since all the properties are, are tied into there. So we always need to type in tag properties and then the name of the uh, property there. So for example, if you can see you would type in name or count or properties. And it's kind of unfortunate that I have a property called properties, but um, I'm sure we can figure our way around that. So you can see that says Jira project. Drag another one into here. We can do the same kind of data binding. We'll say tag dot properties, and then the name of my property is called properties. There we go. Let's so send it back to there. Oh, should give it a background color. So you can say node. Got a nice yellow. All right, so there. We have that template, so now you want to be able to add other templates. Now, what you should be able to do is add other um, labels to this, but for whatever reason, because it's, I think it's because it's a graph of like a metadata, that doesn't work, so you actually have to do a duplicate for each one. And then you go to Jira, Let's see where's the other one, Jira group. As you can see here, um, it got uh, rendered with that with that file. So of course you can do lots of different things. You can then you can save it. Uh, I'm not going to save it, but you, uh, I will open up my my previous template. So you can see here, um, I've got all those. They're rendering nicely, um, and of course I can make it look prettier, but I don't want to. So this has worked out really well for me in terms of documenting 
the properties that are part of every label in my knowledge graph. And now I don't have to maintain the other spaghetti diagram that I had to in the past.